Since cameras were invented, the beauty of the outdoors has always been a favorite subject of photographers. Hi, I'm Don Gale, and I'm a professional photographer from Los Angeles. And in this Tamron podcast, we're going to be shooting here in one of my favorite places and one of the most scenic places on the planet, Yosemite National Park. Part of being a good nature photographer is being able to quickly adapt to changing conditions. As I was driving to another location this morning, I noticed that El Capitan was illuminated by this direct sunlight. El Capitan is the largest granite monolith in the world, and it's a classic here in Yosemite. You know, I, normally when the sun is behind us like this, where we're shooting parallel with the, with the rays of the sun, I normally wouldn't even consider a polarizer, but we're shooting at such a severe upward angle I'm going to check and see. And this thing actually is having an effect on the, uh, on the surface of the mountain up there. There's a little bit of glare, and it is darkening the sky a bit, so it's getting rid of some reflections. One of the things that I really liked about this particular view of El Capitan was the fact that the cliff was mimicked by these two pine trees on either side of the face, and it just set it off and made it a perfect composition. 90 degrees to the right from the same camera position is another rock formation called the Three Brothers. And it was getting the same great light that we had on El Capitan, so I just was able to turn the camera that direction and get a few shots before the sun was gone. Another popular place to shoot here in the valley is Bridal Veil Falls. But today we're not taking the classic shot of the entire falls. We've moved in close to the base of it. And we're actually shooting the runoff in the stream from a bridge. One of the nice things about this particular scene is that there were so many little areas that had nice compositions that I was able to get not just one picture, but several pictures by zooming in and out of different areas. And we were using the Tamron 28 to 75 here. It's a great lens. It's very sharp. This is actually one of the sharpest lenses that I've ever shot with. As we look over the bridge onto this scene, there's a couple of perfectly placed leaves that still have their fall color. So we're able to incorporate those as kind of an anchor for this picture, which has really got some nice compositional strength to it. It's got the flowing water bleeding down from the, the top through the bottom, and we've been able to, through a custom white balance, eliminate all the bluish color cast here. So the snow looks pristine, leaves look perfect, and with the camera here on a tripod, the five-second exposure is recording everything crisp except for the moving water. There's so many great wide-angle shots you can get here in Yosemite, it's nice to have a little change of pace and, and concentrate on some close-ups. So one of the things that caught my eye this morning as we're walking along the trail here at Bridal Veil Falls was some of this moss growing on these trees. The light's just a little flat today. I mean, there's nothing wrong with soft light, but this is just a little flat. So we're going to get one shot of this here first. I think I'm probably going to want to use an off-camera flash to add a little bit of contrast. Yeah, that's just way too flat. This is actually a macro shot, but I'm not using a macro lens specifically. I'm using the uh, 2875, which lets me focus in really close. So we got the flash off camera. Now what I'm going to do, because I, I don't want to make the light that we add to this too contrasty, so I'm going to use a, a softbox here to, to spread out the size of the source to, to soften it, to simulate the diffuse light that we already have here, but it'll allow me to control the angle at which the uh, light comes from, which is perfect. Because right now it's coming from everywhere and there's no real sense of any direction to the light here. So it's going to be coming out of the flash as wide as it can to hit this surface inside this box and we're going to get uh, a huge light source out of this. Instead of the little one inch by three inch strip that we normally have, we're going to end up with about an eight by ten inch light. And I can just, I can bring this in from anywhere I want to. So I'm going to replicate the, the light that's actually here so it kind of simulates the direction the light really would be coming from. And the closer in I get it to the tree, the, the stronger the contrast is going to be. So let's try that. We come in and just kind of back like this side of the tree where the green moss kind of blends right into that reddish, reddish color of the trunk. So the further I put it back there, the more chance I've got of getting lens flare. But with this lens shade on here, out is 
far as it can go. I'm going to pretty much eliminate that. Yeah, the contrast is much better. I mean, we've been able to get some direction to that light and see a lot more detail in the moss and detail in that uh, surface texture of that tree trunk, so it's, it's very nice. Just as we were getting ready to move to another location, I noticed this raven right near my SUV. I knew I wanted to shoot it as tight as possible without getting in too close. So the only solution was to switch to a longer lens, and here I used the Tamron 200 to 500. At 500 millimeters, I can get a very tight shot of just his head. And then zooming back to 200, I can see the whole bird. The raven's feathers have this deep, kind of a purplish sheen to them that's very dark. And in this flat lighting, it becomes very difficult to see the detail. I knew that by using a flash, I'd be able to put more light onto this dark subject and reveal some more detail that was there. But the low power of my on-camera flash wasn't sufficient to throw this distance and to light up such a dark bird. So I'm using a flash extender, which concentrates the beam and throws a lot more light out there, and that way it's going to be able to light him up and we'll be able to see all the details in the feathers. Remember, you don't need to be in a place as beautiful as Yosemite to get great pictures. Once you've mastered a few basic fundamentals and some good techniques, you'll be able to get good pictures no matter where you go.